Hello and welcome to Mission MBA. So guys, we were talking about statistics and now we are going to talk about the last beautiful questions of data sufficiency on statistics. Maybe later I add some more questions on statistics. So make sure that you subscribe our channel so that whenever any video is updated, you get to know about it. And yes, next chapter, I'll be starting with permutation and combination. So after this, we'll have the detailed concepts of permutation and combination mixed with the difficult questions as well. So first I'm trying to bring in the difficult topics so that you understand them well and then I'll follow it by the easier topics as well. I will make sure that I cover the entire syllabus. All right. So now you can have the access to entire syllabus. Just a little favor I'm asking you, please like and subscribe so that it helps me to keep going with such beautiful videos. All right. So you know the drill, pause the video, try the question on your own, then move ahead. I'm going to the white screen. Okay guys. So question says that all the elements of set S are reciprocal of prime numbers. So they are something like one upon P1, one upon P2, one upon P3 and so on. The prime numbers, they can be same, they can be different. Nothing is mentioned over here. Is the median of the set S greater than equals to one by five? So they are asking whether the median is greater than one by five or not. Okay, first statement. The reciprocal of the median is also a prime number. So guys, that's so many cases. If in case I have odd numbers in my set, for example, one upon three, one upon three, one upon three, one upon three, one upon three. What is the median? One by three. You can also have one by seven, one by seven, one by seven, and so on. What will be the median? One by seven. So in one case, the median is greater than one by five. In one case, it is less than one by five. Clearly, this data is not sufficient because you have not given me anything about this set. Just they are reciprocal of prime numbers. They can all be 1 by 11, making the median 1 by 11. They can all be 1 by 2, making the median 1 by 2. Clearly, you can see one case greater, one case less. Let's give the chance to the second statement. Product of two numbers of the set is a terminating decimal. Now, guys, make sure you know this property. And in case you don't know it, Please write it down somewhere now. One upon any prime number is a non-terminating decimal. Except just two prime numbers. One is one by two and the other is one by five. The rest all are non-terminating. For example, one by two is 0 0.5 and one by five is 0 0.2. The rest one by three, 0 0.3333 and so on right 1 by 7 it is also 0.1428 and it continues so that means if product is a terminating decimal all the numbers of the set were either 1 by 2 or 1 by 5 and in that case the median will either be 1 by 2 or 1 by 5 or 1 by 2 plus 1 by 5 upon 2 in case they come at the central numbers now 1 by 2, this is greater than 1 by 5. 1 by 5 equals to 1 by 5. And 1 by 2 plus 1 by 5 upon 2. If you solve it, it comes out to be 7 by 20, which is also greater than 1 by 5. So our median in this case will always be 1 by 5 or greater. So this becomes sufficient. What did you need to know that 1 by p, if it is a terminating decimal, then you have to have either 1 by 2 or 1 by 5. No other number in the set. And to make the product terminating, you have to have both the numbers terminating. If you have one number non-terminating, let us say 0 0.33333, and the other number even terminating, will not make the product terminating. Rather, it will make the product non-terminating. So only possibility was 1 by 2 or 1 by 5 in the set. And three medians, so B becomes sufficient all the medians were greater than 1 by 5. I hope it is clear. If not, please rewatch the question explanation and it will be definitely cleared. Difficult questions, guys. It is not possible that you understand each and every question in one go. They are all 700 plus questions. And if you understand, then very well, guys. I'll feel very happy about it. 
let's move to the next question then. All right, guys, have a look at this one. Follow the drill, pause the video, try it on your own, and then we'll begin. All right, so guys, I'm going to the white page. I hope you have tried it. Let's begin. So set S consists of four distinct non-negative integers. Wait a minute, guys, there's a catch. How many integers did our set has? It has x, 2x, x plus 7, y and y plus 5 so guys we have five integers and you are telling me that you have four distinct that means two are same one catch lies in the question so two integers are definitely same and exactly two are same because you need four distinct no more than two can be same let's go to the option statements now x is not equals to five so what see the mean is 4x plus 2y plus 12 upon 5 right sum of numbers divided by 5 now if x is not equal to 5 it can be many numbers and y is also open so this data alone is clearly not sufficient so many x and so many y's right let's go to the second statement second tells me that 2 by 3 of 6y that will make it a 4y minus 2 by 3 of 12 that makes it an 8 equals to y minus 8 this gives us 3y equals to 0 and y equals to 0 wow this statement is nothing but it just simply tells that y is 0 so what are our numbers now they are x 2x x plus 7 0 and 5 now i know the exact value of two numbers now let's utilize this concept that two numbers were same let's see what are the possibilities so I'm removing this area and let's try to keep the two numbers equal because we know that two are same first case let us say x and 2x were equal if x equals to 2x they both will become zero no other possibility and they both cannot be zero why because here already we have a zero three zeros not allowed we just need two similar numbers so this is not possible if this is equals to this x equals to x plus 7 guys clearly this equation has no solution 0 is not equals to 7 not possible this number will always be greater than x by 7 x equals to 0 we have already seen not allowed y because 2x will also become 0 x equals to 5 right so now we have one solution 5 2x is 10 12 0 and 5 now maybe this is the only solution but in case we'll combine the statements then x is not equals to 5 i'll strike it down but right now i'm giving the chance to b alone maybe there is no other case then b alone will be sufficient let's go ahead if 2x equals to x plus 7 i'll get x equals to 7 all right so this is 14 14 0 and 5 so guys two possibilities now so two different means so of course this can also not be the answer alone now the time is to club the option choices if i club them up x is not equals to five so let's get rid of this as well i'm looking for c so i can cut this down let us see is there any other solution as well 2x equals to zero not allowed x will turn out to be zero that's not allowed we'll have three zeros 2x equals to five not allowed why x will be 5 by 2 not an integer x plus 7 equals to 0 not allowed x becomes minus 7 we need non-negative integers x plus 7 5 not allowed x becomes minus 2 again a negative integer 0 cannot be equals to 5 that means this is the only possibility once i know the numbers i know the mean so the answer to this question is c y is 0 x is not equals to 5 so this is the only possibility such that I have four distinct non-negative integers. Otherwise, you will have more than four distinct integers. I hope you understood this concept. If not, watch the video slowly, watch the video again, pause, analyze the situations, and I'm sure you will understand. Tough questions, take your time in these videos, right? Earlier videos were on easier side. These are the exact things you need to learn. Here, when data sufficiency becomes tough, so you are targeting for quant 51 guys gear up why to stop
let's move ahead to the next question all right guys so this one try this one as well pause the video take your time and see if you get it guys more questions of 720 you get more confidence again so i would want you to try them at least take two minutes please pause the video so all right guys i hope you have tried this question if you haven't play the video now and let's see the solution so guys one to 45 integers you're placing them in groups five and every group has nine elements so five groups of nine elements something like this x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 x7 x8 and x9 i want to maximize the median's average so this is my median so guys you're looking for this particular column all right let's make this column full of the highest numbers how to make them highest simple keep the larger numbers over here 45 44 43 42 and 41 this is the maximum possible median you can get now i don't want to waste my larger numbers so i'm keeping the smaller numbers over here 1 2 3 and 4 so my larger numbers are saved and they can be placed in here so that the median becomes higher for the second set as well for example now i'll place my larger numbers over here so the median becomes maximum possible again if i would have wasted 40 39 38 37 here then i have to start this set by 36 making this median smaller now i have this median highest now waste the smaller numbers again over here i hope you have understood the pattern now the larger numbers over here so that the median becomes highest 32 and 31 waste the smaller numbers over here now i hope you have understood the pattern i would not do the rest i already know there is a pattern analyze the series guys gmat mathematics all about series 41 36 31 gap of 5 next would be 26 and then 21 done five sets guys but still if you want to see it i'll draw the scenario over here 30 29 28 27 what happens over here smaller number guys 30 40 15 16 what about this guys make them larger 25 24 23 22 the smaller numbers over here 17 18 19 20 that's how you could have made the set but i would recommend not to make all of the set you analyze it over here only that there is a series now you want the average of them sum them up sum smartly 40 70 100 120 and 140 I added the 10s, now I'll add the 1s, 1, 6, 7, 7 and 8, that's 15. So guys, total 155, divide by 5, the average comes out to be 31. Instead, if I would be at your place, I would not have solved it. Guys, the idea is simple. If your series is AP, then central term is the mean. Simple. Just draw this scenario, I'll go ahead and show you that concept as well. See guys, if the set is something like 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9, the average is the central number, 5. Or you add first and the last one, that's 1 plus 9, 10, divided by 2, that's the average. First, last, divided by 2. So average of the first number and the last number of the set is the average of the entire set. Only if the set has the numbers in AP. Now, for example, we had 21, 26, 31, 36, and 41. So our set was AP, the mean is the average, or the central number, that's 31. Also, you can take the average of the first and last, 62 by 2, 31. Hi guys. guys, I hope it is clear, and please like, share, and subscribe so that you get the notification of the next module we are going to start. Secondly guys, it takes a lot of efforts to make these videos, bring out new questions and explain them. So guys, please make sure you help us to grow and reach more people so that we can help you absolutely free of cost. Let's revolutionize GMAT and get to Quant 51. All good questions starting from the basic concepts, 
basic questions, difficult questions, difficult data sufficiency questions. Remember, we are aiming for quant 51. 50 is no good when you're looking for 700 plus scores. 50 comes at 90 percentile. You want 99 percentile. Don't settle with quant 50. Quant 51 is our only goal. I'll bring you the best concepts, best questions, and also guys, if you're looking for sectional practice, let us say you are aiming for now statistics question bank or you want to practice statistics questions computer based, adaptive and with time. You are free to connect me. I'll give you access to question banks of statistics free of cost. I'll give you access to computer based tests so that you can time how you're doing your questions. That would be it guys today from my side. Stay tuned for more videos upcoming very soon. I'll bring in each and every concept. Nothing can come out of these concepts in real GMAT exam. So why are you waiting guys? Click the bell icon so that you get the notifications. Bye bye and have a good day.